Hey there, my name's Rob Birdwell. I'm a musician, a songwriter, composer, lyricist, and maybe like you, a Muse score lover. I love using Muse score as a great notation tool. Uh, it's free, it's open source, uh, amazingly creative people doing amazing things with the software. And 4.0 has just been released with Muse score and it's working wonderfully. Uh, obviously it's a ongoing thing and there'll be new versions. Uh, but as of this date, a recording, uh, MuseScore 4 is, uh, the thing. And I have written a plugin, uh, called PruneStack that I wanted to, uh, refresh and make sure that the community knew that it does work with four, um, a MuseScore 4. And, um, I'm going to just cut into a brief, uh, demo of the tool uh, just to kind of revisit it a bit. Uh, you can read all the installation details in the description of this YouTube video, so I don't have to blab on about that. So let's get on uh, with a little demo. I'm just going to share my screen. Okay, if you have successfully installed the PruneStack plugin, you will see it in your uh, listing of a plugin, of available plugins. You may have to restart uh, or refresh uh, your plugins, um, but uh, or reload plugins, I think, from this area here. And you may need to mark it as being enabled. So it should list uh, the version 1.4. The 4 is just sig signifying that it works with um, Muse Score 4. And as you can see, uh, I have. Uh, assigned a shortcut so I can access this plugin uh, via control shift P but you can do any any key combination that you like or just access it from the menu when you need it okay in order to use uh, this plugin you're gonna need a score uh, so I've created a, a little uh, practice score here a little sketch and this is how I, I write not all the time but uh, if I'm doing a lot of blocky voicings or whatever, uh, I might write something like this on a sketch. So let's uh, let's use MuseScore. Uh, I'm sorry, let, we're obviously using MuseScore. Let's uh, let's we need to fill out the parts for the players because the sketch doesn't does them no good. So let's uh, just paste that whole thing into the flute part. Now that's a little unorthodox, but um, I'm going to use, I, now I've loaded up the PruneStack plugin now uh, via shortcut. I could have accessed it through the menu item here, Composing Arranging Tools, PruneStack, but as you can see, there's a shortcut to it. And the way these levels work is one would signify the lowest note in the, the voicing, this uh, vertical stack of notes. And they all have three notes in them because I'm just doing a block voicing. So I'm going to prune out the lowest two, and that's just going to leave me with a flute part that they are going to play, maybe. And anyway, that's a start of it. And so moving onward, um, I'm, I'll be a little more unconventional here, and I'm going to write something for the bassoon part. So I'm going to copy all those notes. And I'm going to just keep them wood windy. And um, let's bring that down an octave. And I would like them, I'd like the bassoon to play this, this lowest voice in the stack. Now, they're going to be down an octave. But again, let's invoke the prune stack tool. And let's prune out the top voice, which is the third one there, and the second one. Again, three, two, one, one being the lowest note. So I'm leaving one there, and let's prune that stack. And what we should have is a somewhat idiomatic bassoon part. Now, obviously, I could maybe go in and refine things, and maybe I want them to play something in the bass clef at the ending, whatever. But we've we've got a start of it. Um, let's, uh, the oboe's going to be, in this case, I'm not going to do anything fancy with them. They're going to just double the old flute for now. Uh, again, when we're orchestrating, we're making decisions and the tools that we use, uh, we want them to be quick and fast. Uh, so for the clarinet part, I'd like them to play that second voicing under there. So I'm just going to copy that whole block there. 
and I'm going to prune out the top voice, which is the flute's got that covered, and the bassoon is playing that, uh, that lowest voice down an octave. So let's prune that up. And so now I've got my woodwinds uh, basically doing their stuff. And uh, let's just play that real... Lovely. Okay. Moving on. Um, let's take care of the brass now. So I'm looking at the trumpet thinking, you know, this is pretty high in the bass cliff. So let's give that trumpet that, that top voice. So I pasted that mess in there. Let's bring the prune stack plug in and I'm going to prune those lowest voicings out. And that should just leave me with the trumpet part. And so it might be the case where um, my alto saxophone is simply going to double that. So for now, I could get fancy, but for now, we're just going to have them double that for some power. Now for my French horn part, um, I'm actually going to use a combination of prune stack and the explode tool. So again, like I said, the explode tool is very powerful, and I use it a lot probably more than I use prune stack. But in this case, um, I'm knowing how explode works. I'm going to just prune out that top voice only. And that's going to leave me with those bottom two voices. So now that I've got those pruned out quickly, now I can just reselect this. And now I can use with a, just a couple clicks, explode that. And now I've got a French horn and trombone part. So if I listen to these doohickeys, um, if I just select those. Oh, it's beautiful. Oh, yeah. Oh, so musical. Wonderful. Anyway, um, <laughs> I'm kind of joking a little bit, um, not to mock my own little composition there. But the point is uh, just a demo prune stack. And just if you haven't used it, or if you think you might want to use it, it's it's free. Uh, you can download it from the instructions in this video. Also, if you've enjoyed anything uh, you've seen or heard in this video, uh, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, I'm writing music all the time, and I've got live performances, and uh, look forward to, to connecting with you. And take care, and happy music making.